and he's on the line now to tell us exactly what that involves and where he hopes to take the club over the next three years. Good evening, Joe Kinnear. Good evening, Andy. How are you? I'm good, very well, Joe. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, OK, I suppose the obvious question is, uh, Newcastle are yet to confirm your appointment. Why is that, Joe? Uh, well, I only signed the contract last night. So, um, unless that's somebody speaking to uh, Mike, um, but it's been ongoing for the last three weeks. OK, so well... Derek Lambesi was the um, director of football, and, Der and Derek's resigned, and the job came available. Since you made the announcement yesterday, the reaction from the majority of Newcastle fans has been one of negativity towards you. Why do you think that is, and, and are you surprised as well, Joe? Yeah, I'm a bit surprised, but I'm, I'm not sure over that. There's only a certain section. It was like exactly the same when I got there. Um, I got over something like 10,000 letters um, when I had my heart attack. And that was a wonderful thing. I, I felt really very proud of that fact. And I thought I'd done an excellent job there, and no way will have gone down. But the, th the trouble is, there's a lot of Geordies up there are influenced from the media set. And, and the fact is, because I stood up to about, I don't know, about 100 uh, <clears throat> journalists uh, that night, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was the same night we beat Tottenham 2-1. And, and uh, they, I suppose the journalists always had it in it, and of course... Lots of, I'm not saying all of the Geordie fans, but, but many of them were sucked into it. Has it? If they'd have looked at my job, what I'd done carefully, that they would have said I'd done a good job. Has but, it upset uh, you, Joe, the reaction? Uh, look, it's part and part of the game today. You know, you look at managers today, they're lucky the last two seasons. Uh, the, 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 the fans uh, always stamped their feet, and if, the player, if they're not happy with what's going on, then the, the manager gets the bullet. Unfortunately, I've never, for them, I've never been sacked in my life. So, you know, and I look at my record, they keep saying to me, what did I do? I mean, where, where have these people been? Have they been on another planet? I've played in five cup finals, I've won the lot. I've had over 400 games for Tottenham Hotspur. I've been manager the year three times. I've travelled the world as a manager. You know, this job come up, which I thought was a, a fairly <clears throat> responsible job, it's got nothing to do. All, 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 already they're jumping on the bandwagon. Uh, oh, watch out, Pardo, watch out this. But that's the snidey press. That's the people up there or around that area that I've upset and they have a grudge. So I expect it. But it's sort of, you know, it's water off a duck's ass. Um, when did Newcastle then first approach you about becoming their director of football, Joe? Uh, about uh, 10 days ago. And was when, that, when Derek resigned. And that was the first you'd heard of it, because obviously we know you're, you're, um, you're on uh, good terms with Mike Ashley, so that was the first time he'd mentioned no, it to you. Well, Derek didn't resign until then. Derek, Derek has decided to go back and be in charge of finances. The, the, the job really is in detail. that you, You've got to be in partnership with the manager uh, and, and look at the strengths and weaknesses of the team. Look, any, anybody wants that. I had to do that as a manager, and Bobby Gould beside you will tell you. Exactly. When, we, when you're at Wimbledon, there ain't no budget. You find the players yourself. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. There ain't no budget. We didn't, have any, we didn't have any scouts, and Bobby will tell you that, and we worked together at Wimbledon. For, well, I was there for over 10 years. And if you look what we had to go out, we went to non-league places and found players. We trained them and worked with them and sold them for millions. It's as simple as that. Have you, so have, they say I haven't had an experience in, in, in buying and selling players. Sure I have. I bought Dean Oldsworth for 50 grand, sold him for 3 million. I sold John Scales for 3 million. I think he was a free transfer. I sold Robbie Earl for X, Y, Z. I sold Marcus Gale, Leonard, and Keith Cole, Mickey Hartford, John Hartson, Hans Seegers, Neil Sullivan. Most of them were free transfers. And we sold to survive. So I know exactly what type of players that are needed. I know the type of football that's needed to play. Yeah. I played it with, with some of the best players in the world at Tottenham, and the best team in the world at Tottenham. So, you know, I, I've been through uh, every stage of my life. And Joe, have you... Fortunately, when I went up there, it, for some reason, I didn't dance to the tune of the uh, Geordie media. Joe, have you... you... Know, I didn't play whatever it is. I, I took no notice of them. I got on... I'm single-minded. Mm. I'm not worried. And whatever they, they've got to say or do, fine. Say ha it. Have you spoken to Alan Pardew since your appointment? Uh, Alan, I'm meeting Alan tomorrow for lunch. We're going to have... Uh, I spoke to him on the phone 
and we're having dinner, to, uh, lunch, sorry, tomorrow together to discuss and have a game plan uh, for the oncoming season. And to the best of your knowledge, who has the final say on players coming into the club? Uh, we both do. We both do. He's the manager, and we'll, we'll sit down and discuss it. We have, we have Graham Carr, who's up from Newcastle up there, and uh, he also has a say in the matter. We'll discuss it, uh, you know, and we look at the strengths and weaknesses between us. No one's got an ego. I haven't got an ego. We'll all sit down and discuss it and do what's best for Newcastle Football Club. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss areas what's desperate for, for needed. In my opinion, we need a striker, and I see that desperate, in my opinion. When I, when, we speak, when I speak with Pards tomorrow, he may see some other uh, position that he wants to uh, in, uh, look better of or get a better player for that area or that pitch or that uh, player. But will it, will it be him instructing you? Or you instructing him? It will be who we got in mind. I should ask Alan who he's seen, mm. and I should sit down with the scout. Now, if they they see those players, I want to cast my eye over them. It's as simple as that. I will have a look at them. If I say to them, "We sit down again," I've seen somebody better. But what do you think? This is not about me coming in like some of the crap that's going on about me. Me coming in, taking over. You know, it's, it's absolutely nonsense. And then I'm there. I read another article that, that recently. I'm coming in and watch over your shoulder, party. I mean, what a load of crap! And this is what that, what's going out there. Unfortunately, they're feeding it to the Geordie fans, and I just hope they're not daft enough to believe it. Joe, the interview that um, you had once with uh, very limited um, English in it. Do you ever re you do regret that? Now, Joe, when you uh, look back I, in your I, career, I, not really, Bob. But I, I meant it at the time because the I just had, I was so fed up with them um, wanting me to dance a tune and, and, and dance to everything they want to say. You know, I wasn't I wasn't ready. I just, I'm a football manager. I just want to get on with it. Look, Bob, I tell you something. I can remember it. We beat we beat Tottenham that night two one, and the first questions I was asked. How do you feel about everybody in the ground chanting there's only Alan Shearer? You know, and I don't think there was, there was a person in the room that actually said, well done. I think they were, I think they were all gutted because we won. You know, and, and that's, that's the way I see things. I'm not worried, really. Joe, have you seen much of Newcastle over the last season? Yes, sure. And uh, you mentioned you think they need to strengthen up front. Is that the only area? Sorry? Is that the only area up front? Um, having seen them well, over the last season, you think they need to strengthen? Well, I think they've got some magnificent strength. midfield players. Toyota, Ben Afra, Yohan Kebab, Sissoko, are very solid in that game. Up front, you know, we've got, if, you, if you look of, of the uh, goals tally last season, um, as far as I can remember, I think, I think we lost our top goal scorer in Denver Bar when he went to Chelsea for, um, I don't know, 7.5 million or something like that. He was the top goal scorer, I think, with something about 13 goals. And... Then you, you had somebody uh, like CC. I think he was the next goal scorer with eight. And then after that, you know, was a, there was a big drop then into midfield where I think six, uh, Kabai and, and uh, Hatton Ben Afri, you know, he got four, I think. And then Suzuka got three. And, you know, the total wasn't much neither, you know. So I think we need a prolific goal scorer to come in there and assist uh, CC. Uh, and I think that's one of, one of the key areas. There might be other key areas. Though. I mean, this is a side that I haven't had privilege to be with, but there's a lot of players still there that were there when I was there. I mean, Krull, I brought Krull there, the goalkeeper, and I think he's a terrific goalkeeper. You know, Shola Amamovi is still there. Sammy is, is getting better and better of his young kid. Gaultieres is still there. <clears throat> and of course, a lot of other players are in. Um, Tails is still there. Um, Perch is still there. You know, so Ryan Taylor is still there. So there's enough players there that I know. But in my opinion, I still think we're short of quality players. And, and if we have to compete with the best in the Premiership, then we need to be stronger. Do you think Newcastle will continue to buy um, French players, or under you, are you going to try and explore a UK market more? Um, I think we'll look at all the markets, to be honest. I, I don't, I've got nothing about against anybody, as long as he's a decent player and he's a quality player. Um, you know, it doesn't matter where he comes from. 
you know, if he, if, he, if, he, if he fits the requirements that we're looking for, you know, if, he, if he's the best right back that we've seen and he's better than what we've got, it makes sense to go and buy him. Joe, you, Graham Carr did a su super job with the French lads and everything. And has there been a designated uh, certain amount of money that you will have to spend, or will you will you have to go to Mike Ashley um, between the three of you and sort out what what actual money is on the table for you to spend and strengthen the Newcastle team? I think I think Michael's a very generous owner, and I think he's one of the best owners in the business to work for. And I don't think Mike will. All mind when we when we give them our business plan. When we when we see it, of course, it may mean that if if we make a decision between the the, the three of us uh, that we have players that we need to move on, and then up to the Newcastle standard, then okay, we'll look at that. If they're, if they're two million pound or plus or something like that, we'll move that round. The three or four of them are going out, or maybe five of them are going out, and then we'll add that to the to the uh, excuse me. Mm. to the tally of, of what players that we're going to sell. We'll make money on certain players, we know that, but we will be getting a finance to come in and take other players. And if, if we spell it out to Mike um, that it's a serious situation where we do need a quality striker, um, then I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that uh, he'll pay up. Okay, this he is wants us to be successful, don't get me wrong. You know, he wants us to do something. He wants us to be successful. He doesn't want us ever to be in the position that he's found us. We, fi we finished fifth two seasons ago. And now, th I think last season, we were something like, you know, either 15th or 16th um, from the bottom. So, you know, he doesn't want that. You know, I think the year that we finished um, fifth... We we had something like um, probably 65 points, something like that. And this year, and like this season just finished, we've gone down to 41 points. So there was a big deficit of 24 points missing. Um, so, you know, that's a big loss. So I want to sit down with everybody that was involved with it last season and find out the reasons why. And if, 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 if we can all put that knowledge together, then we'll, we'll make sure that we bend that. We'll make sure that we'll fight. Somebody may have not come up to scratch. We might have been weaker in certain areas of the pitch. We might have been struggling on things. But once we sit down and all meet together pre-season, then we get a game plan and get it going. So, you know, there's lots of things to do. I mean, the last, if you remember, the last three home games, um, we never scored a goal. We never scored a goal. Liverpool, Sunderland, Arsenal. We never scored a goal in three matches. Joe, listen, you, look at, you look at the, the where, where's the goals coming from? Joe, listen, thank you so much for coming on. Before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to say personally to the Newcastle fans who perhaps don't back this decision? So, well, I'll do, uh, uh, <laughs> to all the Newcastle fans who don't do this decision, do, shall I bring Lambesi back in? You know, what, what do you want? What do they want? And uh, I heard that silly comment, uh, what can I attract? I can open the door. To any football manager in the world, anyone, that's the difference. I can talk, I can pick up, I spent my whole life picking the phone talking to Alex Ferguson, week in, week out. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? I can pick the phone up at any time of the day and speak to Arsene Wenger. I can pick the phone up and speak to any manager in the league, any manager, in all divisions. So, you know... I don't know what angle they've got. They want to sit down and argue with me. Some of them are just talking out the backside, a load of tosh. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not accepting it. It's as simple as that. I've certainly got more intelligence than them, that's for sure. Joe, listen, I know lots of people wanted a piece of you tonight. Thank you so much for choosing TalkSport. Pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. coming on, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Pleasure.